Hello, Mr. Bon. Thanks for joining us today at Deutsche Welle Turkish. I would like to talk with you today about the exoplanets. How can we define a planet as exoplanet? Thanks for interviewing me. So the word exoplanet is actually just an abbreviation for extrasolar planet, which translates to a planet outside our solar system. An exoplanet is thus just a planet that is found to orbit another star than our sun. Each star in the sky can potentially host its own stellar system composed of one or several exoplanets. Just recently, in the past 25 years, we began to discover and to study the variety of these new worlds. You are also a discoverer of an exoplanet. Could you tell us about the planet you found out with your team? So, first of all, I'm pretty certain that the planet our team found is unfit to host any form of life. I will tell you in a minute why I think so. What is promising about the planet we found is it's found around a star that is very equal to our sun. It has the same mass, but is just much younger compared to our sun. It is 17 million years compared to the 4.6 billion years our sun is old. So it's a baby among stars. And even in astronomical distance, it's pretty close to the sun. It's like 300 light years away. But here comes the but why the planet is not habitable. It's a planet that is rather comparable to Jupiter. It's a gas giant planet that is 14 times as massive as Jupiter. So uh, you cannot think about life on this surface because it's uh, made out of gas and not a solid rocky surface as we have here on Earth. Furthermore, the temperature on this planet is around 1400 degrees centigrade. So it's pretty hot, so way hotter than Earth. So in conclusion, it's not a great environment to develop life as we know it, but it's still an intriguing discovery of a planet outside our solar system that might help understanding the formation and history of our own solar system in the future. Not all the exoplanets are habitable. Most of the exoplanets discovered so far are definitely not habitable and are rather gas giant planets or they are too cold or too hot to support life on their surface. Mm -hmm. Have you found a name for your... Uh, for that new planet? For the planet we discovered, we didn't find an original name yet. So actually, the nomenclature of exoplanets is pretty boring. Basically, each star has a name, which can be just a large number. And when you found a, find a planet around the star, you just start enumerating and add the uh, a B to the stellar name. So for example, if the star is called star, then the planet found around this star would be called star B with a lowercase b. And the more planets you found, you have B, C, D, and whatsoever. So this is unfortunately very boring. But there was recently an initiative by the International Astronomical Union, and they uh, actually named, I think, several exoplanets, and people could vote for the best names for those planets. So there are already planets that have cooler names than those standard names each exoplanet gets after it is found. What kind of techniques are used to find out planets similar to Earth? Yes, so there are several techniques which we can use to actually detect exoplanets. Most of these methods uh, only indirectly infer the presence of an exoplanet. So the first detection of an exoplanet was made in 1995 and you might have heard that there was recently awarded a Nobel Prize for the discoverers from Michael Mayor and Didi Quello. And they used the so-called radial velocity method to indirectly infer the presence of a planet around a star. So what does this exactly do? What we know is a planet orbits around a star, but it is not only the planet that moves, but also the star is moving due to the orbit of the planet. This is a very tiny movement, of course, compared to the large orbital motion of the planet, but it is actually in the order of a few kilometers per hour, and we can measure this movement of the stars along the line of sight. And that's exactly what they did, and they inferred that there is a planet around a star in our solar neighborhood, which was the first exoplanet discovered in 1995. But there's also a caveat to this me uh, indirect measurement, we don't know the mass of the planet and just infer a minimum mass. So it could be basically, for example, an Earth-like planet that we have found or a gas giant planet. We just don't know by this technique. We just know there is something, but we don't know the mass. 
So we need other methods to verify the mass of the planet found by this method. So another very common method that it's used to detect exoplanets is the so-called transit method. Actually, most of the exoplanets today were discovered by that method, for example, by the Kepler spacecraft. So you can think of this like a star that is far away. And when an exoplanet transit in front of the star, the star, the, the luminosity of the star, the light we receive here is dimmed by this transit of the exoplanet. Basically, that is like a solar eclipse, just not that extreme. When you have a solar eclipse, we look at the sun and the moon is dimming the intensity of the sun. And exactly this is what the transiting exoplanet does. So we can measure the dimming and can say something about the size of the planet that is dimming this very star. So this is a measure method very commonly used to confirm more than 1000 exoplanets so far. Can everyone discover an exoplanet, even those who aren't scientists? I ask that because I know there are some initiatives in which citizen scientists are used. Yes, absolutely. Everyone can discover exoplanets. There are several projects hosted on the Zooniverse website, which is a website for general citizen science projects. Most of these projects are for the transit mission, which I briefly explained before. These missions, they look at a million of stars, so they have a lot of lot of data. So there are also many sources of noise that can look like a real planet signal. So what you could have is a star that is vari variable. So it's varying in its intensity, and this might look just like the transit of the exoplanet we are looking for. So, and there are several other I issues that might cause something that looks like a transit. And of course, there are advanced computer algorithms that can reject these false alarms, but these algorithms are never 100% reliable. So the best way of testing is actually the inspection of the data by humans. So the human brain is actually excellent at detecting patterns. So there is a way enthusiastic people just like you and me can help discovering exoplanets in this tons of data that is available. And actually more than 100 planets have already been found via these initiatives for general citizen scientists who want to be discoverer of an exoplanet. How many exoplanets were found out till now? Yes, so I checked actually this morning and in the NASA exoplanet archive there are 4,158 exoplanets discovered today. So there are even several thousands of candidates that need confirmation still, but we are already yeah, in the thousands of exoplanets we know today, with many more to come. Do you know how many of them could host life like us? So far, we don't have any exact numbers on whether a planet is able to host life or not. So unfortunately, we cannot precisely map each planet we discover as you would imagine. So we cannot create a map as we know it from Earth with continents and water and whatsoever. And usually when you have a press release about exoplanet detection, you always have a nice drawing, but this is not how we see the planets. As I said, usually we just have indirect methods to detect the planet. And this does not tell us a lot about the planet itself, but we can do some things actually. So what we can do first is ask ourselves what does a planet need to, what requirements does a planet need to refill to be called or to be considered habitable? And first thing is you can, uh, can define a habitable zone around a star. So this habitable zone is basically the distance at which a planet is perfect. It is not too close to the star, that is, it is too hot for life, but it's also not too far away from the star so that it is too cold to uh, to develop some forms of life. So actually you have a zone which is perfect for the development of life. And the scientific definition of this habitable zone is just that the temperature of the planet supports surface, uh, surface liquid water. So you could have liquid water on the surface of the planet. And actually there are already several tens of planets that we know that are within this habitable zone so far, but there are also several other factors that might make these worlds inhabitable 
for example, you could could have a very active star with a lot of outbursts, and those outbursts destroy every atmosphere around the planet. So that would make them inhabitable, even if their position would be optimal to support life. Actually, we can already characterize some atmospheres of the planets that we have found. And we can also detect some molecules. And the future goal, of course, is to, to detect some molecules that can be used as biomarkers, so as methane or CO2. But the signals of those molecules are usually very, very faint compared to other molecules. For example, the Earth's atmosphere is composed of 78% nitrogen, and those other molecules are just tiny fractions of the budget of the atmosphere composition. So the current generation of telescopes, unfortunately, is not sensitive enough to certainly say whether a planet is actually habitable or not, but future missions may be capable to achieve this goal. Mm -hmm. uh, which one is closest to Earth and with our current technology, how long would it take to fly there? Yeah, so actually the closest star we know to our Sun, which is Proxima Centauri, actually hosts an Earth-sized exoplanet. So the closest star already hosts an exoplanet, which is also the closest exoplanet we know so far. So this star is only 4.2 light years away, which is nothing in astronomical distances. So the planet itself has only a slightly larger radius than Earth, and it might even be in the habitable zone. So good news is there might be a habitable planet just outside our doorstep. And uh, yeah, some interesting fact about this planet, one year of this planet only takes 11 days. So one time the planet goes around its stars is only 11 days. So it would be a very different world than we know here from Earth. But Again, we are not sure if this is actually habitable because the star that hosts this planet is pretty active and has a lot of outbursts and they could erode the atmosphere around this planet. And of course, without an atmosphere, it's hard to think that this planet can develop some forms of life. Mm -hmm. But yeah, exactly. So this is actually the closest planet we know and pretty close as well, like 10 light years away, we know Epsilon Eridani B which is a more giant Jupiter gas planet that is found around to orbit a sun-like star. So this is the closest planet we know around a star that is actually similar to our sun, but it's a large gas giant. So no life on that planet probably either. Uh, which exoplanet found out till now do you think resembles the most to our planet? So far, we did not find any Earth analog that is exactly the same as we know Earth is. So there are several planets that are considered to be Earth-like. And yeah, you can rank or you can create some index that indicates the Earth likeliness of a planet. But of course, we don't have anything that is really like Earth as we have it. The uh, closest thing to Earth we know so far is a planet uh, called T Garden B. And it's only 12 light years away. Again, this is pretty close in astronomical distances. And it could have surface temperatures between 0 and 50 degrees centigrade. So this is definitely comparable to Earth. The star is 10 times less massive than the sun. So it is definitely a different environment. But it seems to be pretty quiet. So there is a chance that this planet actually has an atmosphere and maybe also the chance to develop some life within this atmosphere and on that planet. So to make it more clear, I think we shouldn't believe in the titles which says the twin of the Earth was found. Yes. So when the news say a twin of Earth was found, they usually mean something that is comparable in size to Earth. But usually the general surroundings are not. So usually we don't know whether it has an atmosphere. And if it has an atmosphere, it's most likely not as the atmosphere that we know from our Earth. And always, or usually you always have another star that is the host to this planet. So not a sun-like star, but rather a lower mass star or a heavier mass star. So usually when the news say it's an Earth twin, it's a very vague description of something that looks like Earth on the first side. But the closer you look, I guess, the less it actually resembles what we know from Earth. And last question, what missions are currently planned to study exoplanets in the future? 
Yes, actually, there are a lot of missions planned for exoplanet research in the future because it's a very exciting field and everyone is eager to find the first signs of life in the universe outside our solar system. There are some ground-based efforts. For example, in the Atacama Desert in Chile, currently the extremely large telescope is built, which has a diameter of 39 meters, and it should go operational in the mid of this century. So around 2025, this telescope should receive its first light. And with such a big telescope, we might actually be resolvable. Uh, we might actually be able to resolve Earth-like planets around solar-like stars in our neighborhood. So this is what is currently done from the ground. But from the ground, we always have a big problem, which is our own atmosphere, which of course messes up all our observations. And that is what you usually do. So usually you just go to space to avoid this problem because without the atmosphere, you have a sharper image. So there are several space-based missions actually that are planned for the coming years to detect and characterize exoplanets. Uh, first one to launch is actually the James Webb Space Telescope, which is supposed to launch actually next year already. Uh, compared to all ground-based uh, missions, this is a very tiny telescope because it's way harder to put things into orbit or to put things into space. So this is only a six meter telescope, but it is in space. So actually it can achieve a very stable and sharp image with a six meter mirror and can maybe even find some Neptune sized planets. Then in the future, there are many concepts, but what might be promising is for example, an interferometric concept where you have several telescopes acting as one big telescope and those telescopes achieve a very high resolution and you can actually map what kind of uh, molecules you find in the atmosphere of these exoplanets. So there's a mission called Large Interferometer for Exoplanets, which is called Life Short. And this is actually a space-based mission that is maybe capable to detect signs of life in the universe to detect actually life on other planets. But this is so far just a concept and will not be launched before 2050 or even farther ahead. So there are many ideas, but yeah, we will see what the future brings. Okay, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you.